Well, today, the crowded field of candidates running for the U.S. Senate seat, once held by the late Dianne Feinstein, got a bit more crowded as a familiar face to Fox 11 viewers jumped into the race. I am running for U.S. Senate. I'm born and raised in California, and as I look around, I increasingly do not recognize the state that surrounds me. Well, that's now former Fox 11 reporter and anchor Christina Pascucci breaking the news of her Senate run with Alex on our political show, The Issue Is. Pascucci says she's running as a, quote, independent Democrat with ed education, homelessness, and the southern border among her core issues. Pascucci, who also announced that she is pregnant, gave her first print interview to Politico's Christopher Catalago, California bureau chief at Politico. There's a look at his work right there. And Chris Catalago joins me now with more. Chris, it's good to see you. I know you've been in touch with Alex, both of you breaking this news. Alex first, I was watching him at 6 a.m. when he broke the news here uh, in studio and then your, your piece uh, soon after. So thanks for being with me. I wanna start off with the impact. What do you think is the impact of Christina Pascucci entering the race? What this has on the campaign? Yeah, so this is coming at a time we you, we you you've all been watching this campaign now for months and months and months, and it's been pretty stagnant. Um, these candidates have been out there raising money, primarily a lot of focus on Adam Schiff, Katie Porter, Barbara Lee, who are all uh, Democrats in the House of Representatives. And now in these last few weeks, not only have you had Pascucci get in the race, but you've had Steve Garvey, the former Dodger, get into the race, and you've had Gavin Newsom make the appointment for the late Dianne Feinstein's seat with LaFonza Butler, and a lot of us are watching to see whether Butler gets into this race as well. So there's been a lot of action, a lot of activity, and that can have a real impact um, on the ballot. It could it could sort of splinter the vote. It, a lot of it will depend on whether any of these candidates can kind of put the money together in a short period of time to really uh, get their name out there. Butler has until, I believe it's December, until she actually decides if she, in fact, will run. Uh, we learned about Garvey last week. Now we have Pascucci. Is it too late? I mean, let's talk some finances because we know that she's a relative unknown in terms of uh, her experience politically. She doesn't necessarily have any. She's going against some high profile Democrats. This has been their life's work and they have millions of dollars raised. What is her pathway to victory? Is there one? Yeah, in some cases, it's tens of millions of dollars raised. And so I, I think we all need to be real about this opportunity. Anybody who's getting into this race, including Pascucci, um, in these last few weeks or in the next couple weeks, has a huge amount of ground to make up. Um, she's going to have to, to be frank, you know, uh, ring up basically everybody she's ever met in her life and ask them to max out to her campaign, really to even get into the game and be able to run ads in uh, both across the state, but certainly in the LA market and in, in the Bay Area, where, you know, it costs millions of dollars a week to do that. Um, and so, you know, the question is, can she uh, can she show that she's serious in this race? Can she get some money together? Um, Barbara Lee, of the three Democrats we mentioned, um, is someone who has raised the least amount of money. One thing we're watching for is does Pascucci um, uh, at least come up to Barbara Lee's level in terms of the quarterly uh, fundraising? Can she put together a million dollars in a couple weeks? If she does that, I think people will start to look at her a little bit differently. Pascucci, uh, as we're talking about, is a first-time candidate, really an outsider, running for this high-profile seat. Has there been a case of a relatively unknown candidate winning a seat like this? There have been, I mean, it's funny you ask, because there have been a number of folks who come from the news business, um, anchors, reporters. It, that has been a place uh, where folks have landed in Congress, not necessarily the U.S. Senate, um, but there have been folks who have run for mayor, for Congress, um, there are a number from, from last year. We saw Carrie Lake, who was unsuccessful and now is running for the Senate again. Um, there are others. I, I think of someone in Wisconsin, Rebecca Cleefish, who was the uh, lieutenant governor who was on uh, local news for quite some time. Ashley Hinson from Iowa. Um, there have been folks who have come. There is a pipeline, so to speak, from the news industry uh, into politics, including among uh, several first-timers. So it's not unheard of.
We, we have less than 30 seconds, but I want to get this question in. Her campaign is being run by uh, a, an Obama world vet, a Demo longtime Democratic strategist, strategist, pardon me. How significant is that? Will that carry weight? Well, I think there's sort of two things to look at, right? We talked a lot about how uh, Pascucci is going to have to really, uh, really work in these next few weeks to put together some money. Uh, when we look at her team, you mentioned Bill Burton. There are others at his firm. They're going to have to sort of put together what money she can and make the most of it. And so I think the team and their experience matters a lot. I think the fact that she's hired someone uh, who has worked in politics, a veteran who has worked at several levels of politics, is certainly uh, a good sign for her in this race. Well, uh, Chris Catalago, I can assure you, assure you that I will never be seeking public office. <laughs> I'm hold you to that. Okay, I you promise that. you. Uh, thank you so much for, for being with me tonight. I know Alex wishes, I'm sure, that he, he could have talked to you tonight as well. Thank you. Of course, thank you. Okay.